We're revealing engine physics secrets every owner should know. And trust me, what you're about to learn will completely transform how you think about your boat's performance. Here's a mind-blowing fact. The difference between mounting your outboard just one inch higher or lower on your transom can mean the difference between cruising at 40 knots or struggling to break 30. But here's where it gets really interesting. Most boat dealers won't tell you this because they'd rather sell you a bigger engine than teach you proper setup. The truth is, understanding these physics principles can save you thousands of dollars and turn your average boat into a performance machine that'll have your marina neighbors scratching their heads wondering what you did. Let's start with something that'll make you want to run out to your boat right now and check. Engine mounting height. I'm talking about where those mounting brackets sit relative to your boat's bottom. And folks, this is where the magic happens. The conventional wisdom says mount it so the anti-ventilation plate sits level with the hull bottom, right? Well, here's the thing. That's like saying everyone should wear size 10 shoes because it's average. The physics here are fascinating. When your engine sits too low, you're essentially dragging a barn door through the water. That lower unit creates massive drag, and your prop is working in disturbed water that's already been churned up by your hull. Every inch you can raise that engine, within reason of course, reduces drag exponentially. We're talking about the difference between your prop operating in solid water versus trying to grab onto aerated foam. Now here's where it gets interesting. I've seen boats gain 3 to 5 miles per hour just from raising their engine one or two bolt holes on the transom. The manufacturers tend to recommend conservative mounting heights because they're worried about ventilation issues in turns, but with today's anti-ventilation plates and proper setup, you can run that engine higher than Grandpa ever dreamed of. Hey, if you're finding this information valuable, and I know you are because this stuff isn't in any owner's manual, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. We're about to get into the really juicy stuff about twin engine setups that'll blow your mind. Alright, let's talk about something that'll ruffle some feathers. Twin engine spacing. The old timers will tell you to mount those engines as close together as possible for better efficiency. They're missing half the equation, and I'll tell you why. When you mount two engines close together, you're creating what I call the washing machine effect. Those props are fighting for the same water, creating turbulence that kills efficiency. It's like having two people trying to drink from the same straw. Nobody's happy. The physics principle at play here is called the Coandar effect, where water flow tends to follow nearby surfaces and create interference patterns. Here's the kicker. Spacing those engines wider apart doesn't just improve efficiency, it transforms your boat's handling. With engines mounted further apart, you get dramatically improved maneuverability. It's the difference between steering a shopping cart with all four wheels working versus one with that annoying wobbly wheel. The leverage you gain for docking and tight quarters maneuvering is absolutely game-changing. I've personally tested this on a 28-foot center console, where we moved the engines from 26 inches apart to 36 inches. The owner thought I was crazy until he took it out. Not only did he gain 2 miles per hour at cruise, but he could now spin that boat on its own axis like a ballet dancer. The fuel economy improved by 8% because those props were finally operating in undisturbed water. Now let's dive into engine trim, the most underutilized performance tool on your boat. I'm constantly amazed at how many boaters treat that trim button like it's radioactive. They set it once and forget it exists. That's like driving your car in second gear everywhere because you're afraid of the transmission. The physics of trim is pure poetry. When you trim your engine out, up, you're changing the angle at which your prop pushes water. At low speeds, you want that engine trimmed in, down, to push water straight back and get the boat on plane. But once you're cruising, trimming out reduces the wetted surface of your hull, literally lifting your boat higher out of the water. Less hull in the water equals less drag, which equals more speed and better fuel economy. Here's a number that'll make you pay attention. Proper trim adjustment can improve your fuel economy by up to 20% at cruise speed. And that's not a typo. 20%. I've documented this on everything from 16-foot aluminium boats to 40-foot offshore fishing machines. The sweet spot is usually when you see a slight rooster tail behind the boat, and you'll feel the boat release as it finds that perfect running angle. 
But here's the part nobody talks about. Trim isn't just about straight-line performance. When you're running in a head sea, trimming down helps your bow cut through waves instead of launching off them. In a following sea, trimming up keeps your bow from stuffing into the back of waves. It's dynamic, constantly changing based on conditions. Let's talk about propellers, because this is where boat owners waste more money than anywhere else. Everyone wants to slap on a bigger prop, thinking it'll make their boat faster. That's like putting racing slicks on a minivan. You're missing the point entirely. Propeller physics is all about matching your prop to your specific boat and engine combination. Diameter, pitch, blade count, and blade area. These aren't just numbers. They're the DNA of your boat's performance. A propeller is essentially a screw moving through water, and just like a wood screw, the pitch determines how far it travels with each rotation. Here's where people mess up. They focus solely on top speed. A prop that gives you an extra 2 miles per hour on top end might make your boat absolutely miserable to drive in real-world conditions. You need to consider your typical load, water conditions, and intended use. A three-blade prop might give you better top speed, but a four-blade will provide superior grip and acceleration, especially with a heavy load. Propeller cup is the slight curve on the trailing edge of the blades, and it's like having a turbocharger for your prop. The right amount of cup can eliminate ventilation, improve grip in turns, and even allow you to run your engine higher on the transom. Most people have never heard of cup, but professional prop shops can add or remove it to completely transform your prop's personality. Cavitation. It's the boogeyman of the boating world, but most people don't even understand what it really is. True cavitation is when water pressure drops so low that it literally boils at normal temperature, creating vapor bubbles that collapse violently against your prop. It sounds like you're grinding gravel, and it can destroy a propeller in minutes. But here's the thing. 90% of what people call cavitation is actually ventilation, which is just air getting sucked down to the prop. Completely different physics, completely different solutions. Ventilation is usually caused by sharp turns, improper engine height, or hull design issues. True cavitation is caused by damaged props, incorrect pitch, or trying to push too much power through too small a prop. The truth? Some boats are simply designed with inherent ventilation problems. Naval architects and boat manufacturers don't always get it right, and certain hull designs create unavoidable ventilation issues. I've seen brand new boats that ventilate in moderate turns because the hull design channels air right to the props. It's a design challenge that's been around since the first outboard was bolted to a transom. Let's settle this debate once and for all with actual physics. Gasoline engines are like sprinters. High RPM, quick acceleration, lighter weight. Diesel engines are marathon runners. Massive torque, better fuel efficiency, but heavier and more expensive. The physics difference comes down to compression ratios and combustion characteristics. Diesel engines typically run compression ratios of 14 to 1 to 23 to 1, compared to gasoline's 8 to 1 to 12 to 1. This higher compression creates more torque, but limits RPM. That's why a 300-horsepower diesel will outpull a 300-horsepower gas engine all day long, especially at lower speeds. The torque curve on a diesel is like a table, flat and consistent. Gas engines have a torque curve like a mountain peak. You have to climb up to the power band. Now here's where it gets fascinating. Electric motors are about to flip this entire conversation on its head. Electric motors produce maximum torque from zero RPM. That means instant, brutal acceleration that would make your gasoline outboard cry. The physics of electric motors means they're incredibly efficient, nearly silent, and require almost no maintenance. My prediction? Within 10 years, electric outboards will dominate everything under 50 horsepower. The technology is already there, we're just waiting for battery costs to drop. The torque characteristics of electric motors are perfectly suited for getting boats on plane, and the silence will transform fishing. Imagine sneaking up on a school of fish without any engine noise. That's the future. By the way, if you're learning something new here, drop a comment below about your biggest engine challenge. I read every one and love helping fellow boaters solve their problems. The physics of weight distribution is something that separates good boats from great ones. Outboards hang all their weight off the transom, creating a lever arm that affects everything from handling to fuel economy. 
Inboards put the weight in the middle of the boat, lowering the center of gravity and improving stability. Here's what nobody tells you. Outboards actually have a huge advantage in performance applications because you can adjust their position. With an inboard, you're stuck with wherever the manufacturer put it. With an outboard, you can change height, set back, and even angle to completely transform your boat's behavior. The weight penalty of outboards is real, though. A big 400 horsepower outboard weighs about 700 pounds hanging off your transom. That's like having three NFL linebackers standing on your swim platform. This affects how your boat rides, especially in following seas where that stern weight wants to push your bow up. But here's my take. For boats under 30 feet, the handling advantages of inboards are largely overrated. Modern hull designs have evolved to work perfectly with outboard weight distribution. The real advantage of inboards is interior space and draft, not some magic handling characteristic. I've driven plenty of both, and a well-designed outboard boat will outhandle a poorly designed inboard boat every single time. Speaking of weight, let's talk about something that'll immediately improve your boat's performance. Proper weight distribution. The physics here is simple, but the impact is massive. Every boat has a design center of gravity, and when you mess with it, you're fighting physics instead of working with it. Most people load their boats like they're playing Tetris, just cramming stuff wherever it fits. Your batteries are in the stern, your anchor is in the stern, uh, your cooler is in the stern, and then you wonder why your boat won't get on plane or porpoises like a drunk dolphin. Moving weight forward completely changes your boat's running attitude and can dramatically improve performance. I helped a guy with a 24-foot bay boat who was convinced he needed a bigger engine. We spent an afternoon just moving his batteries from the transom to under the console, relocating his trolling motor batteries forward and properly distributing his gear. The result? His hull shot improved by 30%, his top speed increased by 3 miles per hour, and his cruise efficiency went up 15%. Same engine, same prop, just proper weight distribution. Here's the physics. Your boat pivots on its center of buoyancy like a seesaw. When too much weight is at the back, the bow points up, increasing drag and making it harder to plane. It's like trying to push a wheelbarrow with all the weight behind the wheel. The engine has to work harder, burns more fuel, and you go slower. Simple physics that nobody thinks about. Let me leave you with some setup secrets that'll have you outrunning boats with bigger engines. First, get your engine height right. Start conservative and work your way up in small increments. Most boats can handle the engine higher than you think, but here's the critical part. You need to test it at different speeds and sea conditions. What works perfect at wide open throttle might ventilate badly in turns at cruise speed. Second, invest in a proper tachometer that shows actual RPM, not just a rough approximation. Your engine has a specific RPM range where it's designed to operate at full throttle, usually printed right on the engine bracket. If you're not hitting that range, you've got the wrong prop. Running under revved is like lugging your car engine in fifth gear at 25 miles per hour. You're creating excessive load and heat that'll shorten engine life. Over-revving is just as bad, causing valve float and potential catastrophic failure. Here's a setup secret that'll save you thousands. Before you buy that expensive stainless prop, try adjusting your current aluminium prop. A good prop shop can adjust the pitch by up to 2 inches in either direction for about 50 bucks. That's way cheaper than buying a new $600 prop just to find out you guessed wrong. Also, consider the water you boat in. High-altitude lakes require less pitch because the thinner air reduces engine power by about 3% per 1,000 feet of elevation. The jack plate revolution is real, folks. A manual jack plate costs about $300 and gives you infinite adjustment of both engine height and setback. That extra setback moves weight forward, gets your prop in cleaner water, and can add 2 to 4 miles per hour to your top speed. Hydraulic jack plates let you adjust on the fly, which is game changing for bass boats that need to run shallow one minute and cross open water the next. Learn to use your trim throughout your entire speed range, not just at wide open throttle. Third, invest in the right propeller for how you actually use your boat, not for bragging rights at the dock. Pay attention to weight distribution every time you load your boat. Move heavy items forward when possible. Consider performance modifications like hydraulic steering, which reduces driver fatigue and improves control. And here's a big one. 
Keep your bottom clean. A fouled bottom can rob you of 30% of your speed and double your fuel consumption. The physics of drag increases exponentially with surface roughness. Look, we've covered a lot of ground here, from engine mounting heights to the future of electric propulsion. The beauty of understanding these physics principles is that you can apply them to any boat, any engine, any situation. You're not just a boat owner anymore. You're an informed captain who understands the science behind the magic. The most exciting thing I can tell you? Your boat probably has 15-20% to 20 more performance hiding in it right now, just waiting for you to unlock it with proper setup and understanding. You don't need a bigger engine, a newer boat, or expensive modifications. You need knowledge, and now you have it. Remember, every boat is different, every setup is unique, and what works for one might not work for another. But understanding the physics behind it all gives you the power to experiment intelligently and find your boat's sweet spot. If this video opened your eyes to what's possible with your boat, you need to subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and join our community of boaters who refuse to accept good enough. Drop a comment below about which secret surprised you the most, and I'll personally respond. Share this video with your boating buddies who think they know everything. I guarantee they'll learn something new. Until next time, keep your props in clean water and your trim button active.